In this section, we will use the rational zero theorem to find possible rational zeros. Rational zeros theorem. Let P be a polynomial function with integer coefficients in standard form. If P over Q in lowest terms is a root of P of X equals zero, then the rational zero is P over Q. P meaning the factors of the constant term and Q meaning the factors of the leading coefficient. So what is the constant? Well, let's take a look at our given polynomial. So here we're given the polynomial of 6x to the fourth plus 7x cubed minus 12x squared minus 3x plus 2. So to find the constant term when the uh, polynomial function is in standard form, meaning highest degree down to the lowest degree, the constant would be last. The constant it all is always uh, your number or the term uh, that's at the back end. And in this case, my constant term is a two. Now it is always a number, not uh, a variable attached to it. So our constant term is two. Next, I wanna identify the leading coefficient. Well, first of all, I want to identify the leading term. The leading term of a polynomial, when you have it again in standard form, highest degree down to the lowest degree, the leading term would be the term that has the highest degree. In this case, the term 6x to the fourth is the term that has the highest degree. Therefore, that is the leading term now to find the leading coefficient, it is simply just a number in front, and that is six. So our constant would be two in the back end, and the front end leading coefficient is six. So we have two over six, that would be your P over Q. Next, we wanna find factors of two. In other words, what two numbers, when you multiply them together, will equal two? Well, since two is a prime number, that means that the only number that will give you two is one times two. Let's take a look at the bottom. Now, the bottom is a composite number, so you're going to have more factors than just one and that number itself. Can you think of what those factors are? Well, we know we have one times six equals six. And then the other factor, recall, is two times three. So if we put all those together, and by the way, when we list them as possible zeros, we must list both positives and negatives because we want all possible rational zeros. So that includes both positive and, and negative. So therefore, we write it as plus or minus one plus or minus two on top over plus or minus one plus or minus two plus or minus three plus or minus three, six. So again, we have all possibilities of our factors of two, one times two, so plus or minus each one of those. And then we have one, two, three, and six. And again, we have plus or minus each of those and there is written uh, your possible zeros but then we have to write it out in expanded form so that we can list them all okay we will do that on the next page okay so now we're going to actually identify what what are the uh, actual possible rational zeros so what you have to do is match each numerator with each one of the denominator. So what do I mean by that? For example, I take the one that's on top. So if I have a one on top, I'm gonna pair that with a one under the bottom, then I pair it again with a two under the bottom, pair it again with a three under the bottom, and then pair it again with a six under the bottom. So like so. Then I'm gonna take the two that's on top, 
and I'm going to pair it with each one of the denominators. So I'm going to pair the 2 up top with a 1 under the bottom, the 2 up top with a 2 under the bottom, the 2 up top with a 3 under the bottom, the 2 up top with a 6 under the bottom, and it's going to look like so. Now I need to go through these and identify all my possible zeros. So 1 divided by 1 equals 1. So one of my possible zeros is just a number 1 when you simplify that. 1 half is already simplified, so yes, 1 half is also one of my zeros. 1 third is one of my zeros. 1 sixth is one of my zeros. 2 divided by 1 equals 2. So 2 is one of my zeros. 2 divided by 2 is 1. I already identify 1 as one of my zeros, so continuing. 2 thirds is also one of my zeros. And when we reduce to 6, that's going to reduce to 1 third, which we already have. So again, you're looking for all the different unique possible rational zeros. And what we have is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 1 sixth, and lastly, plus or minus 2 thirds. So we have identified all the possible rational zeros that can come out of this combination of P over Q, which is 2 over 6. And there you have it, listing possible rational zeros. Okay, so now that we've done A, which was to list all possible zeros, let's go to B to actually find and identify which one of these is our zeros. In other words, these are not all of our zeros of that polynomial, no, uh, polynomial function. Uh, recall that the highest degree uh, that a polynomial has will tell you how many zeros or how many roots it has. So whatever is the highest degree, that's how many possible factors you're going to have. So I should have four factors. I cannot have this many. This is one, two, three, four, five, six factors. It can't be all those uh, six and actually more. It's, it's six times two is 12 because there's plus or minus of that. So all 12 cannot be my factor. So when I write that as a linear factor, it can only be four factors. So let's identify what are those four. So the best thing to do is to take one of, pick any one of the factors from here and plug it into the synthetic division and see if you get uh, a zero out for your remainder. Remember the remainder theorem? Because if you get a zero out, then yes, you have truly identified one of the real possible, one of the real zeros of that uh, polynomial. Right now, these are possible zeros, but to find out if they are actual zeros, you have to plug them in. So, my advice would be to start with the very first one. Start with positive one or negative one, and plug it into the synthetic division, because once you find one of the zeros you can be able to find out what the other zeros are a lot quicker if you, as soon as you get at least one zero. So let's do that. We're going to um, try one. So we're going to take the positive of one. So that's going to be on the outside of my divisor. And recall, we're going to take the coefficients of our given polynomial functions to put it underneath the symbol so we can start the synthetic division process. So there you have it. Let's go ahead and begin. Bring down the 6. Multiply that with 1 to get 6. Bring down 13. Multiply that with 1 to get 13. Bring down a 1. Multiply that with 1 to get 1. Bring down a negative 2. Multiply that with 1 to get negative 2. Bring down a zero, and there you have it. 
So there is proof that 1 is a 0 of our polynomial. So since we know that 1 is a 0 and that divisor is x minus 1, let's go ahead and write the quotient, which is our answer. So recall, you always write it as one degree less, so the highest degree is a four. When we go one degree less, it becomes a degree three. So that's going to be 6x squared plus 13x squared plus x minus 2 is going to be your quotient. And that's going to be times x minus 1, your divisor. So there's your quotient. Remember, 1 degree less. Along with our divisor. And now we have only one step left. And that is to see if we can factor uh, the polynomial any further. So for this polynomial, continuing on with what we let, where we left off, we can try another zero. So let's try negative two. So if we take negative two, but this time instead of uh, using the original polynomial, let's use the quotient we just received. So remember that quotient we left off here with uh, 6, 13, 1, and negative 2. This time we're going to put the negative 2 on the outside because we want to identify another factor of that polynomial. In other words, break it down to where we can factor that into a more simpler form. So I'm going to go ahead by bringing down the 6, multiply that with negative 2 to get negative 12, bring down a 1, multiply that with negative 2 to get negative 2, bring down a negative 1, multiply that with negative 2 to get 2, bring down a 0, and again, we have a remainder of 0, so that means that negative 2 is a factor of that polynomial function. So to write it one degree less, so this polynomial in blue, which was the starting with the 6x cubed plus 13x squared, so when we go one degree less, that's going to be squared. So 6x squared plus x minus 1 is now my quotient. So I'm going to have that quotient along with the factor of x plus 2 plus the factor of the first one, which was x minus 1. Yes, it's a lot. We're getting there. Hang in there. <laughs> One last step to simplify that even further is to factor, see if we can factor this trinomial. So before we had four terms in that polynomial and that was really big. So what we did was uh, we tried to identify another zero so that we can simplify it and we did. Now we have it simplified into a trinomial which is going to make it easier to factor into a binomial. So when we factor that into a binomial, we are left, it's 3x minus 1 times 2x plus 1. That's what that trinomial factors into. So when you put all factors together, there you have it. You have four factors. And recall I said from the beginning that the highest degree was a 4, which means you would have four linear factors. And there are your four linear factors, x minus 1 times x plus 2 times 3x minus 1. And the last one is times 2x 
plus one. Does it matter the order of which one is first or who's second and third? No. Order does not matter as long as you have all four terms. So what we've just done was we went from regular standard form of a polynomial function to using synthetic division and the remainder theorem and the rational theorem first to identify your zeros in order to write it into linear factorization. So now it's written out in linear factorization form. And there you have it, rational zeros theorem, applying the rational zero theorems. Okay, we just finished writing the polynomial function as a linear factorization. Uh, the last step in solving this problem is to go ahead and state what the rational zeros are. And to do that, all you have to do is use the zero factor property, set each parentheses equal to zero, and solve for x so that you can see what are the four uh, zeros. So in the first one, all that we need to do here to solve for x is to add 1 to each side. And so one of our zeros is 1, which we already knew there. Uh, the other one, subtract 2 from each side. So x would equal negative 2. That's another one of our zeros. Uh, the other one, we would need to, the third uh, equation here, add 1 and then divide by 3. And the fourth and last equation, subtract 1 and divide by 2. When we do that, we can state our four rational zeros. And they are 1, negative 2, 1 third, and negative 1 half. And there you have it, the rational zero theorem. OK, that's it for this lesson. Thank you for watching MVP Tutorials by your instructor, Dr. Spates. I hope you'll join me in the next lesson. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Goodbye for now.